right, the grid search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ida, what is the grid search this week? Okay, this week's great search is due to uh, a part um, discontinuation. I have to find a replacement for our resistive touchscreen controllers. Uh, so we have lots of screens. Adafruit's kind of known for all the TFT screens that we stock. And when we have ones with resistive touch screens, we like to put a resistive touch screen uh, controller driver on the back. Um, some chips have, you know, multiple analog digital converters. You can kind of do the resistive touch screen handling um, on chip. But, uh, you know, a resistive uh, driver is not too expensive. And for boards like the Raspberry Pi, when we can connect a touch screen to Raspberry Pi, we add an I2C or SPI converter to read those analog values of the resistive touch screen and convert them to like X, Y coordinates. Um, so for many, many, many years, we have used the uh, STMPE series. We started with the STMPE 610, and then we updated it to the STMPE 811, uh, and we were using that for many years. And then it got discontinued, but we were still able to purchase a bunch of parts. But as of this week, like we cannot get any more parts. Like they were really gone. We we went through like every backstock, every broker, everything. So the STMPE 811 is no more. So we have to find a replacement. And um, looking for a replacement, well, one thing I really liked about the STMP series is it was both I2C and SPI. Uh, so it would be cool if I could find one of those. That said, if not, I'm willing to go with, you know, one part for I2C and one part for SPI. Um, I'm looking for something easy to use. And most importantly, I'm looking for something that already has Linux kernel drivers. Because I don't want to have to write a driver for the resistive touchscreen. I really like it if it just like magically worked when I connected up the chip and um, gave it a device tree overlay. So uh, let's go to DigiKey and uh, let's, first off, let's show the part that uh, is sadly no more. It happens, you know, you have to be ready for it. Uh, that's why you would buy stuff, you know, if you're, if you need product to the last 10 years, you have to buy 10 years worth of stock or you have to just be ready and willing to we engineer it. Don't ever count on a part being forever. Even from large companies, they eventually stop. So this is the STMPE811. So sad. A four-wire resistive controller. It had this really nice thing. It was both I2C and SPI. Um, so just for fun, let's see if uh, there's any that are I2C and SPI um, within the um, touchscreen category. I don't care who it's by. I don't really care what package it is. Obviously, I'm not going to pick obsolete. I want it to be active. Um, voltage supply doesn't matter because it's going to be different, but as long as it covers 3.3. Oh, I do want surface mount, and the package doesn't matter. I'm not expecting to get something that's the same package. It's That's a lot to ask because there's not that many resistive touchscreen controllers. Um, so there is, there's a couple. So there's the, uh, well, this one's not active, so let's let's only look at active ones. So it looks like there's this uh, BU21021, nice symmetric name. Um, this one looks pretty good, but it's in like a BGA format, which I really, really don't want to deal with. So unfortunately, that one, I'm going to say no. So let's look at the BU2124. So it's not, you know, too bad. The pricing is a little expensive. It's $2 for $1,000. Considering usually I can get a touchscreen controller for under a buck, um, this is where it's like, you know, how much do I want a chip that does both versus the price? In this case, I tend not to need both I2C and SPI at the same time. Again, for Raspberry Pi displays, I'm using SPI, or you know, I use one or the other, and I'm not, I'm not switching between the two. Um, same with um, shields and stuff. I have a touchscreen shield. I'm using um, only one or the other. I don't switch between the two. So... Do you're wondering, how do I know if there's a Linux kernel driver? Well, I actually opened up, if you go to github.com and then go to Torvalds, Linux, blob, master, whatever, input touchscreen, this tells you all of the available um, touchscreen drivers. Are they any good? That's for me to find out later, but I can at least find out if there is some support in the Linux kernel for them. So in this case, I'm going to search for this part number and see if anything comes up. Uh, unfortunately, nothing has come up. So I start deleting some characters. So it looks like the 21029 is supported. 
this is the 21024 so it might work but you know it's not it's not guaranteed and let's see there's the oh here it is the 21024 okay so this one is supported so that's cool so this is a this is an option um for me to look at just just nice and positive again you have to be careful about your search because it was the is a dash 24 so you just delete characters off of the end when you do the search until you find one that's close and then sometimes it also supports the variance um so yeah that's what you got the 029 023 24 so that's cool so this is supported the price is a little bit high but i know that it's available it's also only 8 bit which i feel like i could get more bits for two bucks uh, but maybe you know they're just like, hey, you know, if you're desperate for something that does I squared C and SPI, this is this is it. This is the only option you got. That's not VGA and it still exists. All right, so let's go back and keep looking. Um so let's get rid of interface. Um and let's uh so we still have active only. And now remember I really I really don't want to deal with BGA. It's always I mean like I'm not against it, but like Let's not, right? Yeah, that's my preference. So let's um, let's look through all these packages and remove ones that I don't want. So DFN is okay. I don't want BGA or chip scale or WLSCP, which is also chip scale. QFNs are okay. QSOPs are okay. SOPs are okay. I don't want CSP again, chip scale. I don't want QFN, QFN. That's okay. More QFN, SOP, QFN. No BGA, QFN, TSOPs. I'll go up to 32Q TSOP, but 64 QFP is ridiculous. I'm not going to take that. That's too big. All right, so I got rid of the BGAs. So that at least I'm not going to get any parts that I'm totally unwilling to use. I'm also going to look at um, normally stocking. So I'm only looking at ones that are, that are around. Um, so to start, I'm actually going to look at... Um, so I, I'll tell you something just to watch out for. So normally I would search for like interface, but I noticed that there's like I2S here and then some say serial, but when they say serial, they mean SPI. So I think I'm going to like, I, I, I will acknowledge that there's this interface selector box, but I don't completely want to use it because I'm not sure what serial means in this case. It's kind of obscure. Is it UR? Is it SPI? You know, who knows? Like why is I2S in there? So I'm going to leave that be. Um, Next up, I'm going to, so there's nothing really else. All of these are within the voltage ranges I can use. I don't really care about the current supply or the operating temperature. Again, the packages are okay. Voltage reference, you know, I'll, I'll deal with it. Um, I kind of don't want tube, but I'm not willing yet to say no tubes. So instead, I'm going to just uh, do my classic search by price. And um, I see immediately, like, there's some super cheap, ones up here and i kind of like oh i've got the the rochester let me exclude the the marketplace once so i look at only because the marketplace are going to get the same thing but sold under different names so removing that i'm only getting lots of ti parts looks like ti semtech analog devices do a couple but you know the prices start getting really high again it's like you know four dollars per let me look at prices at one thousand so i can I can honestly compare these. So yeah, basically, you know, there's t all the parts that are like under a dollar is going to be TI. And then Semtech comes in a little bit. Um, all these are 12 bits. So that's kind of good. And then it looks like for my options, these are kind of different packages of the same part. See, it's like TSC 2046 and then IPWR. That's this TSOP and then IPW, this is the non real and this is the QFN version. But it looks like the, the what's definitely popular here is this TSC 2046. It's very promising because, again, I, I, I don't, I want something that is inexpensive, reliable, and will be around for a long time, right? I want all three. So let's go here and let's search for TSC 2046. So it looks like the TSC 2046 is actually supported under the ADS 7846 driver, which is a, which is a driver even I've heard of. Um, so that's a, a popular touchscreen controller, and it sounds like this is like the next generation. And it's register compatible, so you can use the same driver, which is nice. I like that. Um, so this chip is going to be really good. 
And this one is SPI. And then down here you see I squared C serial. This one is the TSC 20, 2007. Oops. So this one is also supported. And it looks like there's a couple different options. It looks like you can do ADC. You can act, it can act as an IO expander or something. Not weird. Um, so these are two good options. Both are available in 16 TSOP. Kind of wondering if these are uh, pin compatible. That would be kind of neat. Let's see. Let's see. It sounds like there's there's a couple families. This is the... There is a BGA version. There's a QFN version. Is there a TSOP version? Oh, weird. Huh. Okay. Maybe it's not actually available in TSOP. So it's available in QFN. So let's look at QFN here. And then let's pop back over here and download the TSC. Oh, sorry. I already down sorry. I downloaded the wrong one. Okay, so this is the TSC 207. This is the I squared C one, which has two address pins. Okay, sorry, this is the TSOP. And then Let's download the 2046. Looks like this is from Burr Brown, which they got acquired a bit ago. Okay, so look, VCC, X plus X minus Y, BDD, and then ground, NCNC, NC, ground, VBAT, aux. So the, yeah, this has like some more options. Aux, D clock, SD. Okay, so it looks, looks like it's a little bit compatible. Well, not completely. Oh, uh, the IRQ change. So they're not pin compatible, but they're, they're same physical size. So, you know, whatever. That's good for me. So these are the two options. And then, you know, I actually went over to the TI website to check. Um, were there any touchscreen controllers that had both I squared C and SPI? And the answer is no, there aren't. So, I mean, I kind of wanted that. Couldn't get it. But I am really happy that I can get two touchscreens that are kind of from the same family. So hopefully they can share some of that driver code. One I squared C, one SPI, same package. So, you know, I might be able to like at least reuse the footprint somewhat. You know, it's like the copper traces would be different, but the footprint of the part would be pretty similar. Um, left hand side is the same, right hand side would need to be rerouted. But that way I can maybe make breakouts for the same chip that would be I squared C or SPI, and it would allow people to use um, resistive touch controllers with Linux, and then hopefully Arduino, there's probably drivers already existing, and then we'll write something in Python as well. So that's kind of going to be my choice for replacing the STMPE um, 811 is going to be this TSC 2046. Sounds cool. It's also like, I think, the, um, the name of the next Blade Runner movie. All right. That's a great church. That's it. Where in the world is